Hey guys, Thunderset here, and today I'm going to be telling you about how I got dual level max, what's going on in the KC Cup, all sorts of stuff, the decks I use, getting into it. So let's start with Battery Men. I used this deck from about 10 to 16 to 17. You start at 10 when you're King Games. Uh, 16 to 17 was mostly blue eyes, like a strange large amount of blue eyes. So I was using Battery Men. They don't exactly have a great matchup versus Blue Eyes, but they do fine. Blue Eyes would have to really start amazingly to give you too much trouble. But uh, Battery Men are just so fast, guys. It makes the climb super easy, super fast. It's coin flip deck, so you're going really quick, but it's actually pretty consistent with Labyrinth Builder. So it's it was good for climbing. It makes the grind way, way easier. But once we got to the more serious decks, I went um, from about 17, I went to a Ritual Beast deck, changed up the text a little, kept it mostly the same, but we'll go over the Battery Men here first. So like I said, 10 to 16, 17, it was a lot of blue eyes. We're just using Battery Men to totally stomp on set first turns or just weak fields. They're going to consistently be able to just get over everything. How would we get out to the invokes? We're using Floodgate Trap Hole and Share the Pain. I'd probably use three Floodgates if I could because we have a real easy way to remove a uh, Cocteus, let's say, after we Floodgated it with our Fuel Cell who will return it to the hand. So it's a good out. Normally it wouldn't be too good an out with the 2900 defense, but in battery decks, it's a good out to Cocteus, so we can run it. And other than that, Share the Pain also works. Beyond an Invoke deck, though, this guy, this this deck just claps everything. Um, it has a little bit of trouble with a mono, and you are seeing a mono decks everywhere. So that's why I would switch to this deck, our Ritual Beast. We'll go over this deck at the same time. I have replays of both. So you're going to see a little bit of both. More of the Ritual deck, because it's more of the tryhard stuff when you're facing more of the tryhards too. I've kept Attack Charge, and I've gone with Plasmus, because I really needed to slim down on slots. So instead of having three slots to counter Cocteus, I'm just going to use the one Plasmus to counter Cocteus. He's a very strong counter to it. Pretty much shuts it down in one, uh, one card, so we're using that. Also, another counter I'm using, guys, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. You've seen this in KC Cups before. Negate all dark, dark monster effects. I'm using this card because I've started seeing so many Dark Lords, weirdly, and just couldn't go by. And, of course, Alistair the Invoked is a Dark Monster, too, so it negates him. So that's only two outs, two techs. How are we getting it to super quick? I don't use... Draw sense high level like you'll see a lot of people use in Ritual Beast. I just use my Golden Sark. When you have Gold Sarcophagus, a lot of the times you don't even really need to banish a specific Ritual Beast. If I really have caught wind of the duel and I really know what's up, I can banish this trap, I can banish the Plasmus, and then in two turns, they're in my hand. Ritual Beasts have no problem surviving two turns, even in a bad matchup. You can still stall for a while. So with Golden Sark, you can just think of these as more copies of my text if it's going to be a duel where I really need them. And then beyond that, guys, it's just easy. Three Win, three uh, Tamer, Elder, and three Winda. Those are your starting plays. These are your complicated boys. With the good effects, you're going to want to loop. And uh, people think Bond is the OTK spell, but really I think Ritual Beast Return is a much better OTK, it's much sneakier, and it pairs well with Apelio because they all usually have, you know, at least 1400 attack to make them hop out and be lethal after 2600, so it's all great. We're also running one ambush because it's a good uh, target to search with our can ulti Canahawk. But other than that, guys, uh, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror was putting in massive work. I caught two Dark Lord decks turn one with this card it was super great other than that guys dual level max was way more competitive this kc cup than the last kc cup so it's gonna be a little tough out there but good luck guys enjoy the replays and thanks for watching okay yami yugi see if it's actually another invokes going first 
Because you're usually going to see invoked with Yami Yugi's. Here he's using Spell Specialist though and not Sorcerer Conduit. Starting with Shadow Imprisoning guys. Shuts down Alistair's, shuts down everything. Here we have a basic first turn play for Ritual Beast with Ulti Canahawk. Get a plus one. You usually just want to search the ambush. That's why we only run one copy of it. You just search it anyway. And uh, get that plus one. Save the pedal fin. The whole shebang. There's the ambush. And then we just sit. The ulti pedal fin there. We are fighting a storm bird, guys. You will run into this every now and then. It's probably snaking people some wins. I used my shadow imprisoning mirror. It's not going to affect any of these monsters. But uh, in the future it may, so I just activate it immediately. Here we're going to Petal Fin, bring out the whole party again, the Elder and the Petal Fin. We have plenty of windows to return to hand. Now we're going to use a Paleo guys, I'm going to Ritual Beast Ambush. He's going to Floodgate, it affects both of them, you believe that? We can still get the Paleo, but we don't get the return, so it's not an OTK. Now, a Paleo just laughs at Stormbird, guys. It has no effect on him whatsoever, because he has to declare the attack for it to even trigger. So, no need to return it. Here, he Lava Golems both our Paleos, guys. Can you believe that? Absolutely insane. But, we Normal Summon Elder, bring out a Canahawk. Canahawk's gonna get us that plus one and get that Petal Fin out. All in one shot. Now we're gonna return the Stormbird and just summon as many monsters as we can to get tons of lethal guys. There's the return of Stormbird. He only has one back row. We're gonna ulti Canahawk again guys. We need that plus one. We're gonna just leave it. Leave the ulti Canahawk. Normal summon the Paleo. All he has is one Econ. That's not gonna do anything to us guys. We go for lethal with three different monsters, even use attack charge on a level goal and we get that farm going. Great, great stuff, guys. Okay, here we are. Again, Yami Yugi is going to be the most played character in this KC Cup. Now, battery men are just like the opposite of ritual beasts where they're so quick and ritual beasts are... They usually have long duels. You'll see some quick ritual beast duels, of course. But, we're usually looking at some pretty long duels. Here you'll probably see the longest battery duel in a while. We have an Alistair invocation, of course, with Yugi. We set a 9 volt battery man. He'll get his search any way he's summoned. Sadly, our boy's not going to be summoned at all. He's going to be destroyed by a Black Rose. Now he's going to invocation. But we have two Sphere Boys, guys. So he's going to not play it safe with Cocteus. He's going to go for the Magellanica. Try for that OTK with 4k, and who can blame him? That's the name of the game with this deck. That's how you farm those wins. But Sphere Boy has our back. Here we're going to normal summon the 9 volt. Search exactly what we want. Probably should have done a micro cell play, but we're okay. Because we have another Sphere Boy. He just tried to swing with the Angelica again. Now we're going to lab build our micro cells away. All for our charger. Charger's going to normal summon from that lab. Now we're going to special summon our 9 volt. 9 volt's going to let us search a second fuel cell. We have two fuel cells in hands, guys. That's huge. We're going to send the back row away first, sacrificing the 9 volt. Now we summon the second fuel cell, send the Magellanica around, or whatever that monster's name is, and then a nice, easy lethal, guys. Great stuff. Okay, here we are fighting Alexis. Going second. Let's see what she's got in store for us. I love attack charge, guys. I just don't know what I would do with attack charge. It would really change the way I play the deck. So this is just going to be a quick little uh, OTK, it looks like. A little Neos in a back row. It's pretty vulnerable to a start like this. So we use our Tamer. Use the Canahawk. This is a pretty basic uh, combo. Use our ulti Canahawk. We save one from there. It's the Dolphin. The Dolphin's going to return the Neos. We have plenty to banish here, all the windows we want. Windows also a good banish, because when you have to protect your Apaleo or something... Oh, here's what I was talking about too, guys. This is how Return does the OTKs. You just hold it in hand, hit him with your Apaleo, and then sneak the Return on him. It's a much, much more common play than you're going to see in... Uh, with a Bond. Usually you're not going to really use a Bond. Your monsters are in defense. 
You have to switch them. It takes a little time. Returns much faster, guys. Great stuff. Okay, Arcana. So yeah, I mean, battery men are gonna be something I'm jumping to when I'm burnt out on the Ritual Beast plays, because they're gonna take so long. So when I really just need to grind out some quick wins, or I can't, you know, because you run out of time with Ritual Beast just doing your normal plays, it all takes so, so long, guys. So, here, we're fighting a Spellbook. You really, really don't see this anymore. Even battery men would have no problem with this, but they're just so quick and aggressive now. You get to see some floodgates, but I don't think I even use them this duel. So here he's doing the whole spellbook shebang. Searching, searching, adding, copying, sets to, it's an organization, and a banishment. So we set two floodgates though, so he has to really worry about that. He banishes one in our end phase, now it's his phase. He's at a normal summon another blue boy. So since he did that in his end phase, that means he has another fate ready in this turn. Eventually, eventually he will. He's just doing all the searches, getting a spellbook of power also. Remember, we have our little micro cell. Uses a show of nightmares, gets another uh, organization. I don't think that's really gonna do anything for him. Use the spellbook of power. Swings into our little micro cell. That's gonna special summon a nine volt. Nine volt's gonna search our charger. That's how you start the combos, guys. He gets to draw one. He gets spellbook of fate thanks to spellbook of power. He's going to use that spellbook of fate. Banish my nine volt battery. He was not gonna get destroyed in the end phase. He doesn't when uh, you're summoned with micro cell here. I throw away Microcell and share the pain to do a Lab Builder, Charger Play, you normal summon the Charger, special summon the 9 Volt, grab hopefully your second Fuel Cell in your hand, you get one Fuel Cell return, that makes room to special summon the second Fuel Cell, that's two returns, three monsters, swinging for lethal, great stuff guys. Okay, here's Yang Yugi, now here I believe... I mean, like I said, anytime you see Yami Yugi, it's Sorcery Conduit. Unless there's nothing in the extra deck or something. But, we are starting with Shadow Imprisoning Mirror and going first. We're making our normal Old Tucana first turn play for Ritual Beast for a plus one. But with this first turn Shadow Imprisoning, guys, no Alistair searches. So even if he searches for Alistair himself, Alistair won't be able to search Invocation, now you gotta draw your one or two invocations. It's a little harder, I do it in the draw phase. He would uh, assume set an Alistair, because you don't really need anything if his effect isn't gonna go off. But, that's just easy pickings for a pedal fin. We're gonna Golden Sarka window, so we have plenty of fuel to do another Ulta Canahawk plus one, which will give us another pedal fin, special summon, and return to hand. Very easy, very normal stuff. For Ritual Beast, it seems hard, but it's generic plays. We hit that action money slot back row. Now we hit him with the Ultimate of Paleo. With that one Ritual Beast ambush, we search with the Ulti Cannon Hawk first turn. A second Paleo, all thanks to stopping a first turn Alistair, guys. Even if he had him, Shadow Imprisoning stops it. It completely shuts down Dark Lords. It doesn't really shut down Black Wings, I would say, but uh, it slows them down. I'm not super worried about Black Wings. You're not seeing them too, too much in this first stage. Probably in the second stage, you'll see them much more prominently. But other than that, guys, uh, first stage down. We'll have to wait to the second stage. I am like 90% sure I'm gonna be using this Ritual Beast deck, so keep an eye out. Thanks for watching guys, it's been Thunderset.